up, y'all? It is 2021, which means it is time for our annual school supplies video. Every year, we do a new theme for our school supplies, like pandas, watercolors, and Toya and Bella in the 80s. And we include a new book that can open and has real words inside. Seriously, y'all, don't sleep on my mini books. They have real stories. Well, some of them do. Back in the day, they were just a cover and we just filled them with like recycled paperboard or cardboard. Then we upgraded to like some general text that you can put in all of them. So all the books had the same thing on the inside. Then I was like, you know, I've always wanted to be an author. Hey, I can be in the miniverse. Anything's possible, including becoming a number one best-selling author, self-proclaimed in the miniverse. All of my printables are free, so yeah. This year, we decided to go with color and use some of Bella's art for fun details. Here are our basic school supplies. Then we have another page with a few art supplies and a small comic book. We have a new mini book. That's one page by itself. And we have a new locker printable inspired by Bella's latest frog food speed paint video. In addition to the printables, we will also be using poster board or cardstock. You can also use index cards. I like to use these for the binders and for pages in a sketchbook foil scrapbook paper, we just need a few scraps, jump rings, a toothpick, a small hole punch or a needle, foam board or cardboard, paint, and glue. Let's start with the folder, cause that one is pretty easy. Just cut it out, fold on the lines, and even though there isn't a line here at the bottom, we're still gonna fold that in half because that's the spine of our folder. Make a small cut on this little side line here, and we're gonna cut this one near the top. Let's just go ahead and trim off that whole little corner. There we, come on, there we go. Turn it over to the other side, apply glue on the side tabs, then fold them over and glue down. Repeat on the other side, Fold over and glue down the top. On the bottom tabs, we're gonna fold those over and apply glue to the back. Then fold it up and glue it down. I like to take a little piece of cut plastic from packaging and we're just gonna slide that into the little pocket to make sure it's not being glued down. Press and hold until you think it's secure, then remove the plastic. Repeat on the other side, then fold it in half to make a little folder with real working pockets. The binder is next. After cutting it out, go ahead and fold over the side tabs. But before we glue anything down, I place it on an index card, lightly trace around it, cut on the inside line, open the printable, Apply glue to the center, glue down the index card, cut the little lines at the bottom, fold over and glue down the side tabs, then the top and those pockets, then flip it over and fold on the black lines. To get that binder shape, cut out the piece of paper, fold it in half and glue the two sides together. Use a hole punch or a needle to put holes in the paper, take jump rings, bend them slightly to open them to place them in the holes on the paper. Add more pieces of paper if you like. Cut a small piece of foil scrapbook paper, feed it through the jump rings, then glue it into the center of the binder to make a three ring binder with pages. And with a little packing tape, we can add a little shine to the binder. If you are gonna add the tape, I would suggest adding it before you glue in the pages and bend the spine. Then I rub my nail across the tape and that will just help to smooth it out and remove some of the texture from the paper. Then continue just as before. The composition book is next, so let's cut that out. 
We have two options here. There's a template that we can cut out, glue onto poster board, cut out, and repeat a few more times to get the same thickness as the spine. Fold the printable on the center gray lines, glue in the poster board to make a composition book that does not open. Or after cutting out the cover, go to the second printable that says school and art supplies, cut out the pages for the composition book, fold on the lines, fold them accordion style with the first page going up, add glue between the pages to make them double-sided. So we end up with two line center pages and the outside ones are blank and single. Use the template on poster board to cut two rectangles, glue them onto the back and front of the pages, glue on the cover, wrapping it tightly around the edge to make a composition book that can open. The spiral notebooks are made the same way. We made two that do not open and then two that do. Good vibes only, DIY. We have one with lined pages and one with graph paper. And I like how on the side of the book, it looks like we have the little rings. Let's make the notepad, cut out the individual pages, glue one onto a scrap of poster board or paperboard, trim off the excess, place all the other little pages on top, run glue along the top edge, then pinch and hold it until it dries to make a notepad with tearaway pages. And we can always glue on more sheets of paper to make it thicker. Cut out the front and back of the computer, cut and separate the back of the computer, glue the pieces onto poster board or colored cardstock, cut them out, repeat for the parts that make the back, glue them onto the back of the front, fold it in half to make a laptop. On this laptop, we added some letters, numbers, and little characters for a little extra detail there. And the picture is from one of Bella's frog food videos. Cut out the calculator. We can glue it onto cardstock like our previous ones and then just bend it. Or we can cut out a second one, glue it onto cardstock, cut out the screen, glue the other one onto cardstock, cut them out and glue them together quickly add a few more layers of black, then quickly bend it before the glue dries. Now we have a little recess cavity there. I'm going to fill it with a little bit of clear nail polish to give the screen a little shine. And if you're good with packing tape, you could use that instead for faster results. Because now we have to wait for this to dry. While waiting, let's take the phone and glue it onto multiple layers of cardstock. I did two on each side, then glue them together so the good side is facing out. Cover the front with tape, trim off the excess. On the back, let's add a little nail polish. I'm using a sheer nail polish to add a little shimmer, going around the camera to make a permanent cell phone case. While waiting for that to dry, cut out the front and back of the tablet, glue them onto cardstock, cut them out, and repeat. Glue the two pieces together, add tape for shine, sand one end of a toothpick to make the point a little smaller, trim it down, paint it to make a pencil for our tablet that we like to call the Lilypad Pro. And there's a few of Bella's sketches on there, so it looks like our dolls have been drawing digitally. Speaking of sketching, on our school and art supplies printable, we have a new sketch pad and a couple of pages to go inside. Cut them out. Let's glue the pages onto an index card and the front and back onto poster board. Cut them out. Take the back, flip it over, Place all of the pages on top, then the cover, line it up across the top edge, add glue, I'm working it into the pages just a little, then press and hold. 
we can use a binder clip here to help us out a little. But now that I'm looking at it, I don't really want it white there. I want it to be black. So I'm going to add a little piece of black paper going around and gluing it in the back. And I will totally include that on the printable. And now we have a sketch pad with pages, which we will need a regular pencil for. So let's use the other half of that toothpick, file down the point to make a smaller tip, paint the center of the toothpick, add a lighter pink on the end for an eraser. Let's add a little gold paint right under the eraser, add a touch of black paint, to the tip to make a pencil. There's a cutting mat, so let's cut out the printable, glue it onto cardstock, cut it out and add a few layers, and that's it. That one's pretty easy. Cut a thin piece of poster board, cut one end at an angle, cut a strip of leftover paper from the printable, minus three quarters of an inch, roll it around a toothpick, using glue to secure it and trim off the excess. Add a thin strip of paper at the top and to the center. Take that cut piece of poster board and trim it just a little so it can fit inside of the paper tube. Glue it in place, paint it silver to make a tiny little X-Acto knife for our cutting mat. A lot of you have been asking for comic books and manga, so I took some of Bella's art, cut it up to make a mini one. It's pretty simple. I was trying to work with what I had, so all we have to do is cut it out. This is the cover and this is the inside. Glue them together back to back. I use an old gift card to fold it in half. Now I'm doing this before the glue has completely set. Smooth it out to make our tiny comic book with pictures on the inside. Yeah, I've been having fun making these. And here is our new book. After printing, all we have to do is cut out the strips of pages, fold on the lines, then fold accordion style, leave the first and the last page single, and then glue the back of those center pages together so they are double-sided. Repeat for the next row. Take the last page of the first row and we're gonna glue it to the first page of the second row, just like that. Take the last two pages, glue the blank one to the back of the last page from the second row, and now we have all of the pages for our book. Cut out the cover and fold on the lines Glue the templates onto poster board. There should be three. Cut them out, glue them into the cover, leaving a little bit of space between them. Fold over the tabs and glue them down. Take those last two pages and we're gonna glue them right into the book cover. Then close it and pinch the spine to make our mini book. That will put a smile on your doll's face. Let's make a quick backdrop inspired by Bella's art. We have a locker printable and some wood paneling. Printable backgrounds are great for when you just need something quick to set the scene. I use foam board for many of my backdrops. However, you could also use cardboard. And I am running out of foam board and all I have left is blue, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna just cover it anyway. And it is white on the other side. My foam board measures 20 by 30 inches. We're just making a small binder-like scene today. So I'm going to measure my printable to see how much space we actually need. So my printable is about 10 and a half inches wide. So I will need 21 inches for both sides. And I want a little space in the center that's two and three quarter inches. So 21 inches plus two and three quarter inches is 23 and three quarters. So that's how long I need my foam board to be. So I cut a large rectangle that is 13 inches tall and 23 and three quarter inches wide. 
I flip it over because I like the white side facing out on my shelves. Measure over 10 and a half inches from the edge. Score on the line. Being careful not to cut all the way through so it can bend. And I did the same thing for the other side. To create a binder room. It's like a hidden doll room, but without a floor and it's skinnier. And it kind of reminds me of a binder. I start covering the foam board at the bottom. I'm just using a glue stick to glue it down, making sure to go past those bins so the paper doesn't get messed up when we fold it. Add another printable to the top. And for the part that goes over the edge, I just trim it off to make a large wall with wood paneling. On the other side, we're gonna add the lockers. I trimmed off the white border, added a one inch strip of the wood grain to the edge, then two of the locker printables. I cut two leftover strips of foam board, one's a half inch and the other a quarter inch, glue them on to cover the seam between the lockers and the wood paneling, because that's what Bella had in the picture. And that's it. Our backdrop is done. And of course, we can go in and add a little spray paint. Well, not real spray paint. I would use a brush to paint graffiti. But I'm just gonna leave it clean for now. And let our dolls walk down the hall, reading their favorite book. But if we did wanna take it just a little step further, we can print off another set of the lockers, glue them onto cardstock, cut the vents, fold the vents up, cut out the individual lockers, and glue them onto the wall. Adding a little more texture to this scene. We can use one of the paintings from our Bridgerton room to make us a fancy backdrop. Now we just need to find the outfits. I'm looking through my doll clothes and Minnie Bella is wearing a red shirt. So I'm gonna go with one of these. Probably this one, because hers looks like it has a collar, even though this one's a printed collar. She had a blue jacket. Here is one that I made for 11. And here is a jean jacket from Creatable World. I think I'm gonna go with the jean jacket. And she had some khaki colored pants. So I'm gonna use these Ken doll joggers and the brown Creatable World bag. And she's just supposed to be leaning against the lockers. Mini Toya needs a golden colored shirt. We got this one from Barbie and a green jacket. This one has a floral print, this one is solid. In the picture it was plaid, so I'm gonna probably go with that one. And she needs dark pants, so I can go with these faux denim pants or these dark gray Ken joggers. I guess it's a sweatpants kind of day. And let's give Minnie Toya a few books instead of a spray can to finish our frog food inspired scene. All of our printables are available for free on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. Thank you for joining us today while we made some school supplies. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and Bella of my froggy stuff. And we will see you next time. Bye.